Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about DevOps. So let's get into it. So the question in question was posted on an old video I made that's called How does one become an ops person without being a developer first? Great video, Frederick. As a developer, what skills or qualities do you hope an ops person who's work who you are working with has? What are the most useful things DevOps people can do to help the development team? That is a very good question. Uh, I will take a basic one first and foremost because this is the most annoying thing ever and that is that the best DevOps people understand what tasks should be possible to execute m most efficiently by the team and what they have to do. Let me break that down a little bit for you. So the most annoying thing about working in a larger company, or it doesn't have to be a large company, any company, is that the ops people, you have to realize that you are the top node in, in a tree. Like, you are the bottom layer. You control all the environments. Which means that if I, as an application developer, need anything done that is not strictly related to the application code, I have to talk to you. And as you can imagine, if you have a large system, that is a lot of people who depend on what you are doing. Which means that you have to have the time to help everybody out. And some things are not necessary for an ops person to be involved in. An example would be, if I have to ask you for permission to get and check the logs when I'm debugging my system, that's a very big hassle for me because you put me in a position where I actually see I need to set up a meeting with you to just check something when I'm experimenting and doing my own thing and that is a big blocker for me as an application developer so the availability of you in that situation needs to be pretty high so my first rule for a good ops person I actually run my own teams like regardless of if it's ops or if it's with the application developers as following there is always someone on hand and you have, we have KPIs, we have an actual number saying that within X amount of minutes, anybody who asks anything in our communication channel should have a reply from the team. No exceptions. Always. Because when you are in such a position, you have to understand who is upstream from you. That uh, basically means that, or rather, who is downstream from you. They depend on what you are doing. Regardless, of, I mean, it's the same thing for an application developer and, you know, users or people using the system. They are blocked. Like, if they depend on your system to, to do their job, well, you are the only person that they can talk to in order to fix their problem. And ops is the same thing for the application developers. So having a very efficient communication, like, responsive, helpful attitude in the, uh, as an ops person is number one. That is so, so important. Second thing is, and this is one of the reasons why I claim to people, and I don't care what you think, uh, that uh, an ops person is a higher form of uh, IT. And basically what I mean by that is that uh, it's not a beginner-friendly job. There are people who uh, tell me that, well, Frederick, the, shame, the ops has changed, and now you can be a junior ops person. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. You can absolutely be a junior ops person, just as you could, in theory, take an, uh, you could take a freshly educated uh, lawyer and make them a Supreme Court judge immediately. That's going to be equal, right? DevOps operations and these sorts of concepts is an enormous area. It's enormously complicated to be good at this thing. You can absolutely be a beginner, you can absolutely be a junior, but I have never to this day worked with a junior ops person who did not have to basically for everything we wanted go to the experienced ops person for help because they don't know enough to do all the things, to check all the environments, to check up the, like the, how the networks are configured, how the load balancers are configured, how the firewalls are configured, or if you were using Kubernetes, how is everything sitting fitting together? Because it's like, it's a gigantic area that takes years and years and years of work to get really good at. And that's why I even go as far as to say that the best ops people used to be developers, because sometimes, as an ops person, if you're ignorant of how the development stack looks, you might spend, you, you might be difficult for you to just figure out where the problems are. Because the application developers, they might have caused the problem by doing something in the code, and if you don't understand code, how the fuck are you going to help them? 
and that's where it gets really really beneficial to have experience that is the second thing which is of course very hard to, I mean everybody needs experience but as you can imagine it's extremely frustrating I have had this so many times where you you're in a situ you're in a company where there is an ops department and the only person who is handling your request is a person who's like started last week d d y there's nothing you can do you sit there and it can take forever to solve your problem. Like you could, like in many cases, we have guys and girls that I work with who are, I mean, this is sort of the hilarious part. Most of the more experienced software developers know the same tools as the ops people do. And in many cases, they're actually better at this job uh, because we, unfortunately, in that specific company, we hire so-called ops only people like there's consultants and you know as I you know what my position are on consultants you think that it's hard to hire good um, uh, software developers you just wait until you try to hire yourself a solution architect or a devops expert or a performance person it's like it's the sin it's to me that like the average consultant in that space is equivalent to hiring someone who knows the office Microsoft office package they don't actually know how most things work. They simply know how to consume platforms that do the job for them, which is not very helpful when you're trying to debug a technical issue with an application or a runtime environment or something like that. It's actually very difficult. And so, in a sense, that is the, at least that's one of the biggest things for me. You have to have a person who knows more than how to click around on the Amazon uh, web interface or the like GCP or Azure or whatever you're using, right? You have to know have someone who actually knows how things work inside of Docker containers, how like the whole basically almost the whole stack in order to do this job really, really well and be really appreciated as an ops person, at least in my opinion. And that brings us to the last segment, which is as I was saying, like yeah, the the empowerment of the teams and DevOps person needs to understand which tasks should be simple and efficient and very quick uh, because most of the time when you need ops it's one of two things as an application developer number one you need to debug a problem that is the most of a common reason why ops and software developers talk that means that everything you do should be related to stability. Your experimenting as an ops person is, in my opinion, like a big no-no. You should never introduce any instability into the system whatsoever, because whenever you do that, you're basically just pushing pushing problems into the ecosystem. Stability is key. Telemetry and being able to find logs and effective, like uh, very quickly getting to uh, a situation where you can very quickly figure out where the problem is. Is the, these are the main responsibilities of a good ops person, if you ask me, at the very least. And that should not have to wait. You should not have a process or like something like that where an ops person has to help out with debugging application logs or things like that. The teams should be provided, like you should have the foresight to understand how do the teams do their job? What is going to be the most efficient way for them to solve their own problems? That is number one. And second, uh, apart from that, is that you're well spinning up new environments, setting up services, setting up all the infrastructure, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that is the second time. It's not as common that that happens. Depending off, the, I mean, if you're running a full-fledged microservices super system and everything is deployed using Helm or whatever you're using, right? You might be spinning up a lot of environments. But I hope that that makes sense. That that would be the secondary thing where they want to create new resources and so forth. And so providing people with the necessary support so that is a fairly smooth experience is also a very good thing. You don't. That in my experience, it's not so important that you make personal empowerment the biggest thing when you deal with that sort of issue because as I said, well, it depends on the company. It's not so common that you're spinning up new environments all the time, but if you are, it's the same deal, right? Developers want to basically go from thought to execution as quickly as humanly possible. And if you as an ops person get in the way of that, that is a problem, it causes toil, it causes all these issues, so you should ideally be, as I like to say, the best ops person is a person who is it's basically a ghost. You don't know that this person is amazing because everything is just always working. But trust me when I say this, you know what an ops person is not good because then everything is always a, toy, always a hassle, everything takes a million years, you never get any help and nothing ever works. 
So what I want you to take away from this is that in my opinion the thing that I'm looking for in an ops person is number one service minded uh, service, my, uh, service minded approach you have to realize that you are a dependency for everything that I as a software developer or like my teams of software are doing which means that we have no choice but to come to you so if you don't have the time or if you don't care enough to answer us we're basically fucked and that is a very bad situation you have to take the responsibility of making sure that you have space in the calendar and to help everybody who needs help and if you don't you have to start delegating, you have to start to empowering teams, make sure that they can do a lot of the things that they might want to do themselves. Because nobody wants to be at your door complaining that something's not working. They just want the problem fixed. And the best part is if they can fix it themselves. So that's number one. Number two is that you have to be really goddamn good at IT uh, overall. Because if you don't know how things work. If you don't know uh, and have like your own ideas and so forth, you're, you're basically useless. Most software developers can run containers and spin up basic services and so forth, but it takes someone who really does this full time to debug the really hard stuff. And that's why I tell people that I know that you can be a junior ops person, I just don't think it's a good idea. Uh, you have to have serious, it, it's a, it's a, as I said, it's a higher form of uh, education. Being a policeman or like a police officer or like a lawyer or something like that and then there's like supreme, like a, a judge or something. Like there's different levels to the thing. Just as we software developers have like juniors, mid-levels, seniors, ex architects, uh, so forth and so forth. To me, ops is the same sort of thing. It's a specialty you go into once you have a really good, strong foundation of how all this stuff works. Because otherwise, it's just you're just not ever going to be able to solve anything. That it's that simple. Because unfortunately, a lot of the figuring out of problems oh, that's a big part of what you do, and that's why it's so important to make sure that the teams they can debug their own problems, they can like work without toil, etc., etc. That is the thing that you should be on the on the lookout for at all times. Because a good ops person, in my opinion, is like a ghost. It's someone who you just you never really think about that they're doing a great job because when they're doing a really great job, everything just works all the time. You don't even think about it. But trust me when I say this, you're going to reflect about how good that person must have been or like how well they're doing their job when you have someone who's not good. Because then everything is broken all the time and you're pissed off 24/7 because they never have time for you. Have a great day.